We'll get to episode 233 in just a moment. But before we do, I'd like to ask for your support of I Can't See You. Go to ICan'tSeeYou.com slash Amazon whenever you need to make a purchase from Amazon.com. That'll take you right to the Amazon.com homepage. Shop as you normally do. Check out as you normally do. It doesn't cost you anything more, and I may earn a small commission. Again, that's ICan'tSeeYou.com slash Amazon. And remember, I Can't See You sounds like a whole sentence, but it's only seven characters long. I-C-A-N-T-C-U dot com slash Amazon. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. From Studio B in Swarthmore, this is the I Can't See You podcast with David. It's like blind people for dummies. Hello there and welcome to episode 233 of I Can't See You. My name is David at David Benj on all the socials. I really do appreciate you listening to this episode of I Can See You, and as usual, I've got a few things to talk about, and I had a couple of very busy days, so there's a really couple of good things here. But before we get into it, I did want to mention this. It was announced today, I'm recording this on the 8th of June in the evening, through the haze and smoke of Studio B. (laughs) Congratulations to my friend Brian Fischler, one of the three finalists in the Flight for Sight $10,000 travel grant giveaway, Brian will be doing a whole bunch of baseball games in various cities in the next six to eight weeks. So I hope to see a game with him here in Philadelphia, and I may even see a game with him in Houston, which would be very cool. And I will get into more about Houston in a moment, <laughs> because I really made a big mistake, but it turned out not to be. But before we get into the NFB National Convention, I did want to talk about a couple of things. The first thing is my Monday of this week, and I did a couple of really cool things. Well, one was cool, and one was I had to do it. And the thing that I had to do, which was a retina specialist appointment. Now, my retina specialist, his name is Dr. Garg, G-A-R-G, and I always like seeing him because he always tells me I mean, they all tell me what's going on, but he doesn't sugarcoat anything. And he kind of explains things like John Madden used to explain football. One of the things that I really appreciated, and I, I used to ask my main ophthalmologist when I was a kid and young adult, every time I would see him, is there anything, is there anything new? What's happening? Is there something that might be able to fix it now? And one of the things that he said to me at the very end, he said, there's a lot of promising things, but nothing that's ready yet. And he explained a little bit more about what was going on, but I really appreciated that. I didn't even ask him. And I kind of, maybe he was cushioning the blow to after telling me that uh, my retina was, he called it fraying. Uh, He said, but it's not as bad as it sounds. However, because I have such limited vision, he used this analogy. He said, if you're a really rich guy and you're driving down the road, which, of course, I will never be driving down the road. He said, if you're a really rich guy and a couple of bills fly out of your window, a couple hundred bucks, let's say, not a big deal. If you're a poor guy, and in this case, poor means not a lot of vision, and you have some change and you lose just a penny, it's a big deal. And that's what he said was basically my situation. Now, the funny thing was, as bad as I thought my vision has been, finger counting at a few feet, they put the letters on the board. The first letter up on the board was an N, And I was surprised that I could see it. So I thought maybe it was bigger than 20 over 400. And it may have been. I I don't remember what the girl had said. But I was able to read that probably because of the hard angles. The next one I could tell was either a B or an E. And I guessed B and it was right. I mean, I had a 50-50 chance, right? I mean, we're really talking about guessing with some of these. The... Next one, even though it was smaller, was an L. Again, hard angle, I was able to read it. 
And I got down to the 20 over 200 line. And I was shocked because I pull stuff up on the cable on the TV, you know, and it has the channel guy down at the bottom and tells you what's there. I can't read it. So I don't know if at that specific time I was able to read it for whatever reason. Maybe it was the fact that I was dilated. And I don't remember if I was dilated first and then I did the the test. But I was stunned that I could read those. And I asked him, I said, you know, every time over the last few times that I've been to an appointment, whether it was Dr. Pro, who is my glaucoma guy, or Dr. Ayers, my cornea guy, and I see him in a couple of weeks, so I'm interested to see. And that's when Dr. Garg told me that story. And he said, it could just be each day it changes, and even throughout the day, as he explained, it changes, and I obviously I know that, but I've been running into things around the house, the corners of our kitchen counter, for example, and I was just shocked that I could see those letters. <laughs> and when I came home later that day, and I ran into that, I said, oh, okay, so whatever that was, there was some anomaly there that enabled me to see that. Again, I'm not sure what it is, was... But I again, I was happy. And the fact that he said uh, I had some fraying in the retina and things like that, obviously not comforting, but he said it could have been worse. Obviously, everything could be worse, right? I took it as a win. And now the one, the part that wasn't the win was the Uber, <laughs> was the Uber there because Liz was working and, and couldn't take off in the morning. Now, since she only worked until one, I didn't get done until one, so she came and picked me up. So I only had to pay for the Uber the one way. The one thing that really troubled me about the appointment, and then I'll tell you something funny that was that happened. The one thing that troubled me, as I was checking out, the girl said to me, is there somebody with you who can write down your appointment? Who could take the card? I said, no, I'm here my, on my own. Just tell me what the date and time is, and I'll punch it in my phone. And I was a little annoyed at that. I mean, do I need somebody to, does everybody travel with a, an assistant? Here's my assistant, take down this date and time. I mean, that's a luxury I don't have. <laughs> it's nice when Liz goes with me, especially because the Uber was about $28, $30. Now, the funny thing was, we were talking about the podcast when he first came into the room and he asked how it was going and, and I told him how much I loved it. And I said, you know, it'd be great if I could really make some money at it. And he said, maybe you need to make a White Cane Killer podcast or something like that. <laughs> and I said, yeah, or a, or a blind serial killer. Nobody would ever believe a blind person could be a serial killer. Oh, that guy couldn't do it. He's blind. So <laughs> I, I've been thinking the last few days, how could I script something and then actually read it? <laughs> I can't. So it's not going to happen. Uh, so if you've got an idea, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> But that was my appointment to Dr. Gargs on Monday, and then I was lucky enough, Liz and I ran to the Whole Foods down the street after and pick up a few things. It's, it's so infrequent that I get to go to a market anymore. Since we got Ziggy, if I'm not out and about with her, with Liz, then Liz stops on the way home from school or runs back out before she gets Jacob or something like that. If Ziggy could go into the store with us and behave, <laughs> then we would probably go. I'd probably go more. But there is no way with all that food that he would be anything but a lunatic. Now, I mentioned I did two things on Monday. Here is the fun thing. Now, it started off, I was a little concerned. I originally had plans to take an Uber to my friend Simon's house, and we were going to go into town Ron, Simon's dad, was going to drive and actually go to the event. The event was going to, it was a Philly meetup for the blind, and we were going to go, well, we weren't going to go. We did go to the Philadelphia's Magic Garden, not Magic Pan, Alex, Magic Garden. <laughs> when I got home, everything got pushed back, and I had a call with a client that by the time I got off of that call, it was after four, and I was going to have to leave somewhere between 4.15, 4.30, and it was right around then that I got off the call and I wasn't quite ready to go. So I texted Simon saying I, I wasn't going to meet him at his house. I would just Uber right there. 
and I would see him down there and then go from there. Just as I was about to order the Uber, I was got a call from my friend Alex, and I talked to him for a while, and when I got off the phone with him, I'm like, okay, well, the Uber says it's six minutes away right before I got on the phone with Alex. When I got off the phone with Alex, it did still say six minutes until I ordered the Uber. And then when I ordered the Uber, it said 10 or 12 minutes. I don't remember. Something almost double, if not double. And I waited, and I'm thinking, okay, it's now 5.15. We were told to be there before 6 because it was a private tour that we were taking of the Magic Garden or gardens. I'm not sure if it's plural or not. And they were going to close the door once we were in. And I got down there just before 6, and I looked around, and I said to a couple of people, oh, where's, where's Simon and Ron? And they weren't there yet. And I thought that was kind of funny because I had ended up beating them there, and I had no – there was no way I thought I was going to beat them there because of, of everything that was by the time the Uber had come. Oh, and the Uber, this guy was originally from Texas. He was a horrible driver, and <laughs> – he pulled up to my house across the street. I didn't know it until he pulled, he pulled down the street and then came back, and I heard the same car come back. Now, when I say I heard the same car, I couldn't hear the motor of the car. It was an electric vehicle. It was a Bolt. I'm sorry. It was a Volt. And I could hear him on the phone with somebody and when he wasn't on the phone, the music was so loud, I could hear him down the street, and then I could hear him turn around at the next corner. So he pulls up, and he's facing the wrong way to go to the highway. And so I thought, okay, he's just going to turn at the next stop sign, and we're going to go out to this other road and then loop back around. The GPS isn't giving him the right directions. I thought, oh my gosh, I am never going to make it to this event. And sure enough, he goes and he goes a couple of stop signs and then makes the right and then basically does this big circle to the other road that we needed to be on. And he easily could have turned around even in my driveway and would have gotten there sooner. But he was a terrible driver to boot. And he was very friendly, though. I'll give him that. And he was interested in talking and meeting people and since they, they've only lived here since October, he and his girlfriend or wife, he didn't say which. I think he said wife, actually. So it was an adventure getting there. But once I got there, it was awesome because Magic Gardens is mostly outdoors, but they do have a, an indoor section that has a gallery or two. And then we did a project, which I'll, t- I'll tell you about in a minute. So we walk around this the entryway is this, basically, if you can imagine a storefront on a city street where there was once a building and whatever happened to the building, it caved in, it caught fire, whatever. There's no building there now. So it's basically this big, on the left-hand side when you walk in, three stories of this mosaic with different pieces of mirror and... Uh, glass and whatnot, and all sorts of patterns. It was very cool. And I have some pictures to put up, but I have not put them up yet. And just on a side note there, there is an app that I'm looking into to post a lot easier on Instagram. It is so difficult for me to post on Instagram. Part of it is that I can't see. The other part is, of course, I just can't hold my phone that long to sit there and dictate or type everything in. So hopefully that works out because I I would love to post on Instagram more. And I have so many things. I I take so many pictures when I'm out and about that it would be great to have those. So I took some pictures of that. I took a blind selfie or two in front of that. And on the right side, when you walk in, same type of art. But on the right side, it's more eclectic. There are bottles. There are bowls. There are plates. There's bicycle wheels all built into this wall that makes this, I guess you could call it a design. It was very cool, though. And so we started there, and there was some sort of mosaic on the floor. Uh, I don't remember. That was just tile, as far as I can remember. 
And again, I've got a couple of pictures that in the next day or two I will put on Instagram, assuming I remember to do it. <laughs> and you can see that. And then we walked around the place on our own, which was very cool. Uh, I talked to a couple of people as I was walking around. And again, I was taking some images. Uh, there were a couple of images taken of me by some others. Uh, it was a Philly Touch Tours, Philly Meetup for the Blind event. So I know there's some pictures on the Philly Touch Tours Facebook page, and I'll link to that in the show notes. Catherine Allen took a picture of me actually taking a picture of the one mosaic wall. And it was just cool wandering around. I talked to Lisa a little bit while I was doing that. I talked to Catherine a little bit. Trish and I talked for a bit as we wandered around. Once we were done that, we got to go inside and make some of this, some of the stuff that we saw embedded in these walls or on the floor or hanging from different things. They had almost like a, um, a pergola that had some lights on it and some, I don't know if it was vines. It, it, they looked green, whether it was vines or some sort of tree or something, I don't know. And some things were hanging down. And so that was all very cool. So we went in and we got a hunk of clay, which we then had to flatten. And then once we got it to a good flat disc shape, we then took a doily and smushed the doily into it as hard as we could so that it would then leave this imprint. And then once this dried, you could paint it or do whatever you wanted with it. Now, the funny thing with me, we, w we went to dinner after, and I'll get to that in a minute. But at dinner, Lisa was panicking that she lost hers, and then she found it. When I got home and I was getting something to drink, I realized that I left mine on the, <laughs> on the table at dinner. And I'm okay with that. I mean, I would have liked to have brought it home, but I was terrified that Ziggy might eat it. And who knows what it could do to him because he eats so much junk. But I left mine at the table. So somebody at Brawhaus Schmidt on South Street may... Uh, may take that home, and maybe maybe one day it's a work of art and they get a lot of money for it. I doubt it, but, you know, it could happen, I guess. But that was a lot of fun. There were 16 of us that were in the group that went to the Magic Garden and then went to Brawhaus Schmidt. Uh, dinner was great at Brawhaus Schmidt, but we had, there was one waitress, her name was Kiwi, and it took forever for everything. Again, there were 16 of us. So, you know, I was surprised that they didn't have somebody helping out and so forth. But w one poor person, uh, Denise Brown, she didn't get her food until everybody else was done eating. And it's not like she had ordered something crazy. Uh, she had ordered wings and something else. I don't remember what the something else was. And finally, they said that they would comp it, which thank God they did, because again, everybody else was done and ready to go before she even got her food. But I did rec I would recommend the food. It was very good. And I had Wiener Schnitzel uh, chicken. And um, I always thought Wiener Schnitzel was only veal, but evidently that's not the case. But it was chick it was basically a chicken cutlet and a potato pancake, which us Jews call latkes. And uh, it was also good, even though they didn't give me the applesauce. Not that I would have put the applesauce on the latke, uh, sorry, the potato pancake, I would have eaten that separate because I love applesauce, especially when it's homemade, fresh applesauce. Then when the bills came, and we all got individual bills, so <laughs> this poor girl was running to each each seat, basically. There were a couple folks who were together, Ron and Simon, obviously, and Trish and Andy and their daughter, Katie, and her husband, Ryan. They were one, but everybody else was pretty much one. I was in seat 13. That's how... Kiwi remembered where everything went. She wrote it down by by chair number. So when I first got the bill, I, I thought, okay, here's the card. Just go ahead and take it. But everybody else was having issues. Andy got billed for an extra beer. Ron got billed for an extra beer. And it never came because this poor girl was the only one waiting on us and just was constantly running back and forth with food. The other thing that was terrible, and my bill was right, by the way, and she ended up fixing the other bills where the second beer never came for those two. And there might have been one or two other people that a similar thing happened. The worst part was, and I've mentioned it before here, CCT, which is the paratransit in Philadelphia run by SEPTA. Some people had 
called for their rides, you and you set it up, you have to schedule it in advance. You just can't say when you're out and about, say, hey, I need a ride right now. It's not like you're calling your mom or dad and they just say, okay, I'll come and get you. You schedule it in advance and you're basically then at their mercy. They might get there 20 minutes beforehand, half an hour afterwards. Sometimes it's even earlier than 20 minutes beforehand. And it's just awful. So a couple of people when they ordered their food, ordered it in to-go containers just in case their rides came. So instead of eating on a plate, they were eating out of a box. So that is that is the one main issue with CCT, and I'm not set up to do it, and I don't know that I ever will set it up so that I can do it. Although, <laughs> in Houston, when I'm down there for national convention, there is a way to use their CCT, whatever, I don't know what their paratransit is called, but it's free, and they do run from the airport to our hotel. So obviously that might be something to do, and I'm going to have to look into that a little further. But as far as Monday night goes, it was awesome to be out. And I got the ride home with Ron and Simon, which was awesome. And I didn't have to take an Uber. Ron actually brought me right to my house. Usually I just go to their house and then get an Uber or Liz picks me up. <laughs> there was no way Liz was picking me up because it was after 10 at this point. And uh, she had texted me either when we were at the restaurant or just when we left that she was going to bed. So there was no way she was coming. So I would have Ubered home from Simon and Ron's house. But again, it was a lot of fun and I love doing things like that. And I'm looking forward in Houston. There's a couple of outings uh, to the Space Center and to the Natural History Museum. So I'm looking forward to those things. And I'm actually going to talk to the folks at the Natural History Museum. I was talking to Trish Maunder, who is head of Philly Touch Tours and the person who started Philly Meetup for the Blind, where I will pitch our services as part of the Vision Council to go back down there and show, evaluate what they do and then show them what they can do to make it better for accessibility for blind and visually impaired visitors. So that might be kind of cool if I get to go back to Houston after, <laughs> after the convention. But we'll see, and I'll let you know. Okay, so as I mentioned last week, I made my plane reservations and bought the tickets, and I registered for the convention, which was the first thing I did because I had to do that by May 31st to do it online. Otherwise, you have to do it on site, and that is exponentially more difficult when there's a whole bunch of people checking in and trying to get it. Now I just basically have to pick up my badge and all my tickets and whatnot. But I kept forgetting to make my hotel reservation. And as I had mentioned last week, I decided to go because... I was told that the Marriott has that skywalk to the Hilton through the convention center. And I thought, okay, that's fine. Well, that night I was talking to Denise Brown and she said, you better hurry up and make your reservation because if you don't, you might not get in the Marriott. Sure enough, when I got home from that meetup for the blind event at the Magic Garden, I made the call. <laughs> Marriott, the block of rooms was sold out, which was a bummer. But before I called Marriott, I thought, you know what, let me just check the Hilton first, just to make sure something didn't open up. So I called the Hilton, still nothing available. And I got this really nice girl. Her name was Jade. And I'm guessing she's in a call center somewhere. I don't know where, but I don't think she was at the hotel in Houston. But she was very nice and very helpful. And then I called Marriott, after she said nothing was doing, called Marriott. I got this guy named Felipe, and Felipe was horrible. He said, oh, yeah, I see that it's sold out, but there, it's only one night that you can't have the NFB rate. I said, okay, well, that's cool. I didn't understand how that's possible, but all right. So he's fiddling with his computer. I'm on the phone for 18 minutes and he finally says, you know, something's up with my system. Let me transfer you to somebody who can help you. He transfers me and I basically am going to have to start the process all over again. And I told the lady who picked up, I'll just call back. While I was on the phone waiting for Felipe to find this way of getting me to stay at the Marriott, I thought in my head, 
If I could stay and use membership miles from American Express and convert them into Hilton honor points, I'll just do that and just pay with points and then stay at the Hilton. The Hilton was $288 per night. And the NFB rate was $119. So obviously you see the difference there. Two and a half times more expensive. So I wasn't going to pay $288 a night. But if I could pay with points, I'd be okay with doing that because we have quite a big number of points, assuming I had enough. So I called the Hilton back. And I don't know the guy's name, whether he gave it or not. I don't remember it if he did. And I spoke to him and he said, oh, uh, your point total for that would be 528,000 points. I'm like, oh, I don't have that many. (laughs) And there is a difference between the Amex points and the Hilton points. And I know the Amex are more, but they're not that many more. So I thanked him and I said, I'll just have to find another place. And he said, well, what's your budget? And I said, I guess I could pay up to $200 a night. I said, what are the hotels in your that you're going to tell me? And I said, oh, hold on a second. And I went to the NFB convention page, and it listed three hotels. I said, I'm going to name three hotels. You tell me if they're a Hilton property, because I obviously have Hilton honors. And we'll go from there. So I mentioned the three hotels. And I said, of those three hotels, which one is the closest to the Hilton Americas Houston? And it was the Embassy Suites, and it's literally just down the street and across this small road. And I thought, man, that is really close. So I took that, and that was 125 a night. That was the NFB rate at the other hotel. So so 125 a night. I'm at the Embassy Suites, and as several people have pointed out, a, (laughs) a free breakfast. Many people have invited themselves to come and eat breakfast with me so they don't have to buy breakfast (laughs) in Houston. I'm excited for that, that I'm just down the street. So I guess it worked out that I made a mistake and forgot to, could you call, it is a mistake, but I I mean, I honestly forgot every time I thought about it it was a a bad time and, but it worked out, I guess. I I, will see. I mean, if it rains all week and I'm soaking wet every time I walk into the uh, Hilton Americas Houston, then I'll know I did make a big mistake because at least with the Marriott, I would have been undercover the whole time. And I will continue to call to see if anything is opened up at the Hilton. And hopefully that happens. And then I'll just stay there because I'd much rather just stay right there and not have to go outside. The one cool thing that I did notice when I was checking the walk from the Embassy Suites to the Hilton, there is a Starbucks right on the corner within the Hilton. So I'm good to go for breakfast there if I need to. But in the meantime, I found that there's a couple of tours going on. Like I said, the Space Center and the Natural History Museum all which leave from the Hilton. And so I was wondering how that was going to work out if I was all the way over at the Marriott. Now I don't have to worry. It's just down the street, so I'm, I'm okay there. And as I mentioned earlier, Brian Fischler may be in Houston when I'm there, and he's going to obviously go to an Astros game. And I'm, I'm not sure if he's going... They play... There's the, the homestand while we're there. They play the... I almost said the Avalanche. They play <laughs> they play the Rockies and then they play the Mariners. And I, I don't remember which game he was gonna go to or try to go to. So uh and he asked me if I wanted to go and I'd obviously love to go. So hopefully I will get to see an Astros game after all in the juice box down there in Houston. <laughs> So now just a couple of quick hitters before we get into Just Listen. I was playing with Ziggy yesterday. The shorts that I had on, for whatever reason, when I would lay on my side on the floor while I'm playing with him, my keys, which I keep in my left-hand pocket, were under my weight. And on my keys is a key fob for the car, in case I want to jump in there and go out for some milk and eggs. (laughs) And a key fob for our security system. And this isn't the first time it's happened, but I set off the panic button. I hit the panic button, which, funny enough, is two buttons, not one. And so I'm not quite sure. I guess all my weight was on the key fob, and it hit the button, and whatever. Set the thing off. It freaked Ziggy out. (laughs) But the worst part was, and again, I was all by myself with Ziggy at home. Jacob had left for work. I didn't know what was going on until I realized it was must have been that. I wasn't sure Jacob had left just a few minutes earlier, so I was wondering if he did something. 
And I knew it probably wasn't that because he had been gone for five minutes or something like that. So I'm trying to shut the thing off. I can't obviously see the buttons on the key fob to know which one shuts it off. I just started pushing one at a time because I knew if I push two at a time, it's going to, it's the panic button. So I finally was able to shut it off and then waited for the call. And in the past, like this has happened before, the call didn't come for five to 10 minutes from the security company. Now, they explained to me that the police had already been dispatched. Let me tell you, if that alarm went off and it took that long for the police to get notified, not only would I have been dead, my body would have been cold. It took that long. It was just crazy how long it took. And as I've mentioned in a previous episode where something similar happened, we had a guy who rented at the video store. His name was John Lewis. And I haven't seen him in decades He was a gun dealer, and he always said, you know, it's great that you have an alarm, but that alarm goes to a call station, and the call station then calls the police. So by the time the police are notified, most likely, whatever is going to be happening to you, it's already happened, and the police are going to get there. It's going to be too late. That's why you need a gun, he used to tell us. (laughs) I don't need a gun because I would shoot the wrong thing. But the funny thing was, with the whole story, after Ziggy calmed down, he went into his cage when the alarm company called. I don't know if he thought that was the people from CBVI coming to pick me up, and that's why he went in there. But to get him out, I was actually sitting on the couch when I spoke to the security company. Uh, On the couch, we have a three-cushion couch, and I was sitting in the third cushion. So if you're looking at it, the one all the way to the right, and that's where he usually lays down. So when he went into the cage... He's looking over. I said, come on, you don't have to stay in there. Come on out. And he finally, I said, look, I'll move down. So I moved down to the middle cushion. I said, come on, Eric, your seat's available. And he came on and he jumped up there and he laid down and he was, he was okay at that point, I guess. But it did freak him out. It was kind of funny uh, and sad at the same time, I guess. I got a call today from NFB of Pennsylvania President Lynn Heights and I got to be honest with you, when she calls, I always get a little worried that something <laughs> something has happened with an email, with the website, some other catastrophe. But today it was a great call because she was listening to the OVR meeting. And the OVR is the organization that oversees the Bureau of Blindness and Visual Services. And they are the ones who handle the BEP program and that sort of stuff. Well, she called me today to tell me that they've changed the funding for businesses. If you wanted to start a business, what it used to be, or what I've been told, you had to put up around 10 grand, and then they would finance or grant you $10,000. Well, that's changed. They took that self-funding part away and have raised their portion to $30,000. And I'm wondering if that has to do with the calamity that's going on with the BEP program here in Pennsylvania, or if it's for some other reason. I don't know, but I was very excited to hear it to the point where the the business plan that I have, I started editing because I want to get that in. I want to make sure that whatever new business, that I can get that started in 2023 and that I can take advantage of that that extra cash because as I've mentioned before, what I want to do, I want to do some sort of YouTube blog podcast combo that deals with accessible venues, whether it's a museum, a stadium for a sporting event, an arena, zoo, movies, hotel, plane, train, Automobiles, we know, are (laughs) not really accessible to blind folks. I I mean, you can sit in them, but that's about it. So I want to get that going. And, you know, with this extra money, it would help pay for not only some of the equipment and the services that I'll need as far as maybe editing video or things like that, but it now will pay for a good chunk of admissions to the different museums. And obviously, I would start in Philadelphia because I'm going to have to learn and hone 
any kind of skills, whether I'm using someone as a camera person or if I'm doing it all myself and I don't know how that's going to play out. And obviously, if I need a camera person, obviously, I'll need money for them as well. So I would start in Philadelphia because, again, there's plenty of museums, a lot of cool museums here. The Museum of the American Revolution, very friendly to blind and visually impaired folks. Penn Museum, another place, very friendly. Philadelphia Zoo, horrible. I'm going to find out about the Franklin Institute in a couple of weeks because I've told Lynn Heights that uh, when she called to ask about some folks coming up from Maryland wanting to do a day going to the Franklin Institute and a couple other places, if I would kind of show them around, I said, sure. So I'll get to see what kind of accessibility features they have over there at the Franklin Institute. I mean, you get to walk through a heart. So, I mean, that's something, right? (laughs) But I'm looking forward to that and, like I said, uh, cleaning up the business plan that I can hopefully final submit a final version to BBVS and get that ball rolling. And now I just need to figure out a name and all that sort of stuff. But I, I kind of think I would go with the I can't see you as far as a business name goes and then maybe just have a separate YouTube channel and separate podcast title for that. As far as where I'd blog, I don't know if it would be at ICan'tSeeYou.com or at some other site, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But I've been looking for the last six to eight hours at different things, ways to set everything up and and do all that. So I'm excited for that. And hopefully I'll have more to report back in the coming months. As I mentioned earlier, I spent Monday evening at Philadelphia's Magic Garden and At the end, like I mentioned, we did a project. Here are some of the sounds while we're doing that project at Philadelphia's Magic Garden on Just Listen. Into a little courtyard, and then there's a little tunnel. Yeah. So the narrow, yes, the narrow bit that you're walking through, you know, you're walking down a different kind of silk, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could feel each side of it. So that sort of carries on, then it comes to the end, and then you turn and go down another corridor. So it's, um, yeah, so it's, it's not a, yeah. oh, thank you. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, 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 yeah, we, uh, well, I have my courtesy having one. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to one on the White Marsh tomorrow, an oh. outdoor one. And I, knew, I read that there were one here. And I was just, you know, supposed to be asking about Yeah, um, yes. yes. Yeah. So it's more yeah. kind of a descriptive term than it's a yeah, physical yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all roads lead home, but sometimes people do get a little lost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. <laughs> That was just a really cool night, and it was nice to be out. It happened to be a nice night. It was before all this smoke came down from Canada and made everything smell like we were at a <laughs> we were at a campfire and then burning our eyes and then making it hard to breathe and. <laughs> So I hope where you are, it's not as smoky, and it was a fun night. I will put a link to Philadelphia's Magic Garden in the show notes. They offer all sorts of cool events there after hours at night where you can do different projects or take groups or things like that. So I'll put a link to the website in the show notes so you can check that out if you're in or around Philadelphia or if you're just visiting. Finally, to White Canes Connect. Now, I'd mentioned last week episode 075 of White Canes Connect featured Vicki Landers and Esther Gilliard about Disability Pride Philadelphia. The parade was supposed to be this Saturday, the 10th of June, which I was a little irritated with because I was going to have to participate in manning our table and whatnot. Not because I wasn't 100% on board because it was, it will be, my anniversary with Liz, our 33rd anniversary. And so I was going to spend a majority of time down there instead of with Liz. So unfortunately, or fortunately in my case, because now I can spend all day with Liz and maybe that's worse for her. (laughs) Because of the smoke that has made our air hazardous, 
above 400, and I'm not sure what that 400 is, parts per million, parts per billion, some other number for some other measuring unit, whatever it is, when Liz woke up today, it was four something. And so because of that, they have postponed the Disability Pride Parade Philadelphia until September. I don't know September what. Episode 075 was a difficult episode for me to edit. And I know I mentioned it last week and I put the link in for it last week because I knew where it was going to go, but it wasn't finished yet. I didn't finish that and publish it until yesterday. And I got it as clean as I could and then sent the whole episode through a phonic again, which is usually what I do. And so episode 075 is out. I'll link to it again in the show notes in case you tried after last week's episode of here of I Can't See You episode 232. If you clicked over there, obviously it wasn't up yet. But episode 075 of Philadelphia's Disability Pride Parade and Disability Pride Pennsylvania, that organization's events leading up to the Disability Pride Parade, Episode 075 is now active, even though the parade has been postponed until September. So check that out. And that brings us to the end of episode 233 of I Can't See You. I really do appreciate you listening. Remember, the show notes are over on the website, ICan'tSeeYou.com slash 233. That's ICan'tSeeYou.com slash 233, all numbers. And remember, I Can't See You sounds like a whole sentence. But it's only seven characters long. I C A N T C U dot com slash two thirty three. Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. Be well, stay safe, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast with David. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends.